What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Home Built Workshop. Today, we're gonna ditch the plastic folding table and replace it with this cool little table made out of some elm. Stick around, check it out. So I need to build us a new table. The one we're using right now for our homeschool setup is a plastic folding table. The surface is really rough and bumpy. It's hard to write on. The thing's really wobbly. It's gotta go. So the wood that I'm gonna use is this rough sawn elm. This came from a tree in our yard. A couple years ago it had died. We had it taken down and it's been cut up and drying for a really long time. It's ready to be put to use. Now the biggest issue with this is that it's all live edge. There are no flat and square edges to run on my table saw. I can't cut anything down accurately. So we need to get this cleaned up so that I can actually use this stuff. Now there are a few different ways that you could straighten this edge. You could use a straight edge with a circular saw. That was my first choice, but with a piece small like this, none of these are all that wide. I know I'm gonna have to glue up a panel. I just don't have enough room on there to really keep the saw nice and balanced and keep it safe while I'm making the cut. Another way I was gonna try was just marking a line on the board and then cutting that on the bandsaw, jointing one edge and then going from there. But really, I think what's gonna be the easiest, we're gonna head out to JW Hardwoods in Peyton, Colorado. They got a really cool straight line rip saw. Let's get these things cut down. This old saw is so cool. The power feed itself has a three horsepower motor and I think the saw has something like a 15 horse motor. It just slices through stuff and ends up with a nice straight edge. Boy, am I glad I decided to take these and have them straight line ripped. There's no way I could have done it in anywhere near the amount of time that it took us to do this out of JW. Well worth it. Sometimes you just have to make that decision as to what's worth your time. Maybe you spend a little bit of money and have somebody do a process for you versus doing it yourself. But if it can save you hours and hours, a lot of times that could be worth it. So you gotta weigh the pros and cons and do what's best for you. Now I'm gonna work on getting these things planed down to thickness, jointed and cut to size. So now I have all the pieces cut down to size. I've ripped them to width and roughly cut them to length. I've left them a little bit long because I intend to trim them nice and square once I get this together. That way it gives me a little bit of room to kind of move them around and make sure everything lines up good. So now I'm almost ready to glue this top up, but these boards are flat, but they're not perfectly flat. So in order to help keep everything in alignment, I'm gonna add some biscuits. That way when I clamp it together, they can't slide around. First, I need to mark out on all the boards where I need to cut the biscuits. A framing square makes this really quick and simple. And now I'll just make all the cuts for the biscuits. That's a lot of biscuits. Kind of makes me want some gravy. Huh. Time to glue it up. My gloops like that are a little bit stressful. Now we got this thing clamped together. We'll set aside to dry and we'll start working on the base. First I'll square up the ends of the legs. I'm not going to cut them to final length just yet. This is the only piece that's got a really bad crack. 
just going to trim it off here so that the crack is only on one side. I'll end up patching that up with some epoxy. Now I can start cutting down the pieces that will make up the aprons of the base. First by squaring up the ends, jointing an edge, and finally I'll rip them to width. So with all the pieces cut for the base, now before I can start assembly, I need to repair this crack that's in this leg. It's already dimensioned, this crack is really opened up, so I'm gonna mix up some epoxy to put in here. And while I have the epoxy mixed up, I also need to fill a couple of knot holes that are in the top. So first I need to sand that top down, then we're gonna mix up some epoxy. In an effort to cut down on some of the sanding, I decided to use a card scraper first to help level out some of the high spots. This ended up working out really well. A card scraper is something I don't use all that often, but every time I do, I wonder why I don't use it more. Now I'll just use a little bit of house wrap tape to seal up the end of this leg. This is going to prevent the epoxy from just running out and getting all over everything. At least that's the plan anyway. And a quick blast from the air hose will get all the dust out of all the cracks and crevices. Here I'm adding a little bit of black pigment to some two-part epoxy. Mix well before using. And now I'll just very carefully go around and fill a few of the voids that need to be patched up. A quick pass with the blowtorch helps remove all the bubbles from the epoxy. That way we don't have any bubbles in the middle. Hopefully it works out better than that guitar body. So now all we need to do is wait for this epoxy to cure. Just gonna let it sit overnight. Now that I have the epoxy all sanded down, there's a few tiny cracks that I need to fill. Sometimes I've found it's hard to get the epoxy to run down in a super fine crack. For that kind of a fix, I'm going to use some of this Starbond Brown CA glue. This stuff is way cool. Brown CA glue kind of blends in with the wood. I really dig this stuff. In full disclosure for you guys, Starbond did send me this glue to try out, but I'm telling you, it is awesome, and I will definitely be purchasing some more of it. There's also a couple small cracks on this other leg that I need to fix as well. Really easy with this brown glue. Now, instead of hand sanding these, a quick pass through the drum sander. Now I can cut the legs down to their final length. And I'll add a quick 45 degree chamfer to the bottom of the legs. After a little bit of sanding, now I can mark out where I'm going to cut the slots for the biscuits to assemble the base. I'm transferring the same measurements from the aprons to the legs as well. That way everything lines up. So this is actually a little bit tricky to keep everything straight since all the biscuits need to be on different corners. I'm really having to take my time, pay attention, make sure I mark out everything so they don't make a mistake. Fingers crossed, let's do this. And 
Now I'll readjust the height on the biscuit joiner so that I can cut the slots on the legs. This will give me a little bit of an offset between the aprons and the front of the legs. Time to glue. After letting those two leg assemblies dry, now I can just glue the two pieces together to form the complete base. So I just checked everything for square with this machinist square. It is nice and square. That is a benefit of having at least a nice flat work table. My floor is not really level, but just having a nice flat surface to work on. Now I'm going to make some brackets that will get attached to the base. These will be used to attach the tabletop. I'm drilling some oversized holes so that when I screw the top to the base, it has room for expansion and contraction. I'm going to put a washer in the hole and that's what the screw is going to sit against. These blocks will just get glued into place. Now using a straight edge with my circular saw, I'm going to trim the tabletop nice and square. The last detail I'm going to add is a 45 degree chamfer around the edge of the top. I really dig that. It's just a small chamfer, but it really changes the look. I like it. Hand sanding. Yay. Really just breaking the corners just a little bit, just so it's not super sharp. More sanding. So now I've got the table flipped over. The pieces are still separate. I haven't attached anything yet, but I'm using a combination square just to get the base centered on the top so that I can drill the holes. To mark the holes, I'm going to use a transfer punch. These things are great, really handy for a lot of applications. It's just basically a steel rod with a center point, very similar to a brad point drill bit without the drill bit part. You just find the one that fits down in your hole, give it a tap, and it makes a nice centered mark. Well now is the time I can finally begin applying the finish. For the finish, I'm going to use this blend of Wipe On Poly Mineral Spirits and Boiled Linseed Oil. If you want to see a little more in-depth how I made this, I'm going to put a link in the video description. I made a video about mixing this up. Really a nice finish. Now I would like to apply this with a brush. It would be a little bit faster, but I don't have any. So now, we're going to wipe it on. And again, I don't have any gloves. <laughs> Rona. Let's do this.
I'll probably let this soak in a bit and apply a second, maybe a third coat, but I'll apply at least two coats of this to make sure we have a nice, even coverage. Once the finish dries, I can now attach the base to the top. First, I'll place a washer in the hole and then secure it with a screw. And with that, this project is complete. I really like the color of this elm once the finish is applied, and it's also really cool to think that this was once a tree in my front yard. Well, there it is, guys. The elm table is complete. I'm glad to have this done, and I cannot wait to get rid of that plastic folding table. This is going to be so much nicer. The surface is nice and smooth. It's going to be great to write on, do work on. It's going to work out awesome. I'm so glad to have taken the time to build this thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed putting this thing together. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. gotta be the worst torch I've ever owned. It's always sneezing. Half the time it won't light. It takes like 800 clicks with the trigger. You can't light it with a match or a lighter or anything. Leave your torch recommendations down below in the comments. Whoa. Thunder. And the thunder rolls. Got the camera right here. Oh, next to me. Ow, sorry. And I left the biscuits over there, and I don't have any room to get around. Oh, that was a tricky one. It's a dang mess in here. To do that, I'm just going to use a centering ruler and swat that horse. Confusing. There's a mark right there. He came up to help me, but I haven't even gotten to the point where I need a hand yet. So I'm just making him sit around. <laughs> it's terrible, huh? There's always something. That holds you up, huh? You guys know when you're building something. Yeah. It's glued shut again. Just use this. Geese. <laughs>